Hi everyone, welcome to my class. Um, in this grade 12 class, we are going to be discussing monohybrid crosses. I have selected two examples from old question papers. The first one can be found in the February-March paper of uh, 2018. Right, in this uh, question, we have a diagram that shows the pattern of inheritance of deafness in a family. They give us the capital letter H as the dominant allele and they give us the small letter H as the recessive allele, and the recessive allele here will represent deafness. Um, so in the first question, they want to know how many males, and then they want to know how many generations. Using a highlighter or a pen is a good idea here. So let's have a look at the males first. We've got John, we've got Paul, and we've got Lyle, which means that the number of males will be three. And if we have a look at the number of generations, there's our first generation, here is our second generation, and there's a third generation, which means the number of generations will also be three. Then in our second question, they want to know a little bit about phenotypes and genotypes. And the first one they want to know is the phenotype of John. So let's just highlight John there so we know who we're talking about. And as you can see, John is heterozygous. He's got one capital letter H and he's got one small letter H, but he's going to be showing the dominant characteristic, which means John will be able to hear. And remember, phenotype is about the physical expression of the character of the genes. Okay. And then they want to know about Paul. And now here's Paul and they want to know what is Paul's genotype. Okay. Now, as you can see, Paul is definitely not deaf, which means he definitely has a capital H to start off his genotype. The question now is whether or not he actually has the small letter H or a capital letter H for that second letter. Because remember, he needs to have two alleles, one he inherited from John, one he inherited from Linda, who's his parents. Okay, if it was just the one letter H, it would be a gamete, not a human. Right. So let's say Paul. Now, if you have a look at it, he got, has got a capital H. Now, he got that capital H from John over there. OK, and the only thing Linda, his mom, could give him, the only possibility is a small letter H. That means uh, Paul's genotype is then heterozygous. Right, now we move on to Lyle. Now, Lyle is here at the bottom, and as we can see from the key, Lyle is deaf. Now, now, both of his parents can hear, and they want us to explain to how he inherited the deafness. Okay. Now, we know that both of his parents need to have a capital H each because they can both hear. And because Lyle is uh, deaf, that means that he is homozygous recessive. Okay. And that means that if we look at it, it means that he got a small letter H from Gabby, his mom, okay, and he got a small letter H from Paul, his dad, okay, which makes his parents heterozygous, okay. And if we look at the answer here at the bottom, that means that Ila inherited one recessive allele, that's our first mark, from each of his parents. And it's going to be important to say not just he inherited it from his parents. You're going to have to say that he got one from Gabby and he got one from Paul. And then on our last question, Lyle marries a woman who is homozygous dominant for hearing and use a genetic cross to show the percentage chance of them having a deaf child. Right, so we always start by writing P1, and the information we were given was the phenotype. So we start by writing phenotype. And remember, Lyle is deaf, but the person he's going to have offspring with can hear. And then, of course, remember, then you go to the genotype. And to be deaf, Lyle had to be homozygous recessive, so that's two small H's. And the person he is going to have kids with is homozygous dominant, so that's two capital H's. Right, now we're going to have a look at the gametes that are being produced. Keep in mind, 
that you can only give to your offspring which you what you yourself have so if you only have capital H's you can only give capital H's and we do this through the process of meiosis remember to always add that that's a good mark to get there right then once you have your gametes you can draw your punnet diagram I'm doing this freehand. You are going to use a ruler in the exam. And then remember to put one parent at the top and the other parent at the side. And then this is going to be fertilization. So now we're going to put the two gametes together. So a small H and a capital H in each little block. Right? And then we can go on to the PF1 generation. So the F1 generation, we're going to now start with the genotype because that's what we just calculated. If you look at the F1 generation, there's only one genotype, which is heterozygous. And then we have the phenotype. And there's only one type, which is hearing. And this means that there is 0% chance for them to have a child that is deaf. Now we have a look at our mark allocation. So let's start with the marks that are guaranteed. Remember to always start by writing F1 and P1 because that's definitely worth the mark, as well as meiosis and fertilization. Okay, and then you're going to get one mark for the phenotype, one mark for the genotype. One mark for indicating the gametes, which you can either indicate here or you can indicate it in the Punnett diagram. Same thing with the genotype of the offspring. You can either get the mark over here or you can get the mark in here in the um, Punnett diagram. And then remember that you, get, you have to uh, look back to your question and answer the question. In this case, they asked show them of having show the percentage chance of them having a deaf child and in this case it is zero percent that means that there's seven places for you to get a mark right so our next question comes from the november 2018 paper so this question comes out of 2.4 flower color purple or white in a particular plant species is controlled by two alleles a capital d and a small d four crosses were carried out to determine which allele is dominant 40 offspring were produced in each cross, and the phenotypes of the parents and the offspring in each cross were recorded. The results are shown in the table below. Right, so in our first question, we start with question 2.4.1. State the dominant flower color. For this, we go back to our table. And as you can see, every time we cross white by white, like in cross 3, we get white offspring. But when we cross purple and purple, we suddenly get white offspring as well as purple offspring, which tells us that white is our recessive color and therefore our answer is purple. That would be our dominant characteristic. When we look at question 2.4.2, use cross one to explain your answer to question 2.4.1. So we go back to our table and they want us specifically to use cross one over here for two marks, and this is the easy one because we're going to tell them exactly what happened in the table. Namely, when you cross a purple flower and a white flower, all the offspring have purple flowers. Question 2.4.3 states Mendel's law of segregation. This comes directly out of the exam guidelines. So you study it, you memorize it, and you give it back to them. And remember, if you want to study it in the form of bullets, like it states here, you are more than welcome to do that. It doesn't have to be in the form of a paragraph. So let's have a look at it. So two alleles for a characteristic are separate during meiosis, so that each gamete, and that's important, that part which says each gamete, contains only one allele for that characteristic. Then if we look at question 2.4.4, use a genetic cross to show how the offspring of two purple flowering plants can produce a white offspring as in cross two. Okay, 
And this is a six mark question, which means we're going to do a proper genetic cross now. As always, we start, we are showing, we're talking about the P1 generation. And remember, we are now going to start by saying phenotype, which is the physical expression of the characteristics. In this case, we are going to cross purple with purple, as it says in the table. Now, remember, when it gets to the genotype, we want to be able to have a white offspring, which means both of these need to show a recessive characteristic as well. And remember, they gave us the letters. You can't make up your own here. That means that both of these need to be heterozygous. So that's a capital D and a small d for each one. Once we've got the parents sorted, we have to go through meiosis to get through meiosis to get to the gametes, which is what we are writing here. And remember, you can only give to your offspring what you have in your genetic code. That's what this process is showing. Right, then we draw our Punnett diagram, nice and neat. And we put the one parent at the top and another parent at the side. And then we put them together. And remember, regardless from which side the gamete is coming, when you put them together, the capital letters are always first and the, um, they're always placed alphabetically. And remember, this was now fertilized because that's also worth a mark right now we get to the f1 generation the f1 generation we've got the genotype now and the genotype is there's only there's three different types we've got the two one that's homozygous dominant then we've got the one that's heterozygous and then homozygous recessive and then when we get to the phenotype, there will only be two types. They will either be purple or they will be white. The question didn't ask for ratios. And then let's have a look at the mark allocation. This is a six mark question. Of course, you have your normal marks of P1 and F1 and meiosis and fertilization. And then remember, you get a mark for saying what the genotype and the phenotype of the parents are. You get a mark for genotype and phenotype of the offspring. And then there's one possible mark for the gametes as well. Remember, even though there's seven possible marks on the memo, you can only get a maximum of six. And thank you for joining me in my chaotic classroom. See you next time.